What's up guys, this is Ray and welcome to Asian Filmers. And the movie we'll be talking about today is the 2018 film Laplace's Witch, directed by Mike Takashi. And this video is brought to you by my patrons over at Patreon. Thank you so much for contributing so that way I can check this movie out in the theater and deliver this review to you guys today. Laplace's Witch is based on a novel written by Higashi no Keigo whose books, a lot of his books have been adapted into movies or TV dramas, a couple of which are The Miracles of the Namiya General Store and Midsummer Formula and a lot of his other books have been adapted into either good films or some some not so not so great films but I think for the most part uh, Higashi no Keigo's work should be recognized he should be a name worth noting but you know as many of his books that have been adapted into movies this movie is still directed by Mike Takashi which nowadays doesn't really hold great weight I feel uh, I feel if he's not directing uh, a really bad anime adaptation he's he's directing a mediocre movie so I mean, I still like Mika Takashi's movies. I'll still check them out in the theaters whenever I have the chance because I still have hope that he'll pull out a really good film once in a while. And Laplace's Witch, it stars Sakurai Sho, Hirose Suzu, and Fukushi Sota. Uh, and, you know, I, I generally like the actors that appear in this movie, especially Fukushi Sota. He's, he was probably uh, the name I was looking forward to seeing the most in here. And also Hirose Suzu. Uh, Sakurai Sho, I, I like his movies. I don't think he's a bad actor, but he was the name I was least excited about in this movie, admittedly. But the story of Laplace is which it's a murder mystery which revolves around these mysterious killings which happen in these onsen towns or onsen or hot spring towns and uh it, the police think that these murders happen because of natural phenomenon but they're not quite sure so they bring in this college professor uh who's also a geochemist by the name of Aoi and he's played by Sakurai Sho they bring him in for his advice and so they can help them with uh with the investigation and while helping them with the investigation he runs across uh Madoka who's played by Hirose Suzu and for some reason she's kind of, she kind of has this weird power in which she can she can predict uh, the future in the sense that she can predict when a natural phenomenon would occur and the police start thinking that she may be involved with these murders and so let's talk about the positives and negatives of the Plastic Witch and as far as the positives go I I generally like the performances by all the actors and actresses featured in this movie. I think the standout was Hirose Suzu. I enjoyed her character and I enjoyed her performance of that character. And just the sheer concept behind her character, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, you know, and not only her, but pretty much everyone else, as I said, who appeared, especially Lily Frankie. Lily Frankie has a supporting role in this. I thought his performance uh, really stood out. And as well as uh, Tamaki Hiroshi. I mean, there are a lot of names that pop up in this movie. Uh, and I think that's just what... Uh, that's the power of Mike Takashi's films. In pretty much all his films, he has a lot of big names, either you know, big uh, as in like the the new hotness, or even old veteran actors who still have relevance. And I feel like whether his movies do well or not, that's a whole different story. But you can always count on A-list actors to pop up Mike Takashi's films. And Laplace's Will Laplace's Witch is no exception. Another thing, as a murder mystery, I thought Laplace's Witch was all right. Uh, I, I think it, the movie led you uh, with really interesting questions as the story progressed and the way everything played out, yeah, I thought it was alright. But I especially like the concept, as I mentioned before, of Hirose Suzu's character and as well as Fukushi Sota's character. And, you know, as you can kind of take a hint from the title of the movie, Laplace's Witch. Laplace, you know, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Laplace was uh, a mathematician. And the story has a lot to do with math i guess i guess for you know lack of a better description the whole idea behind madoka behind hirose suzu's character is that she is extremely good at math to the point where she can almost it's as almost as if she can predict the future or what's going to happen next and you have a few scenes which that were really cool that showed off her ability like there was a scene when she threw a paper airplane uh in this shopping mall and it kind of just floated around uh and then just came back to her. And there was a scene when a kid actually spilled orange juice on her table and she just kind of nudged her notebook slightly out of the way so uh, that way it didn't get drenched by the juice which was creeping towards her. And just little stuff like that I thought was quite interesting. And the music, I love the music, I love the soundtrack. But when it comes to the negatives of Laplace's Witch, it's the main character, uh, Professor Aoi. You know, at first, you know, you get introduced to Sakurai Show as is kind of, college professor, this university professor with expertise in geochemistry and 
you know, and you know, he's brought on as this expert character, but the impression, the long lasting impression that you have of uh, Professor Aoi, especially after the story finishes, that impression of a university professor doesn't doesn't carry on throughout the end. Kind of at the second act and from then on afterwards, you kind of forget that he's a university professor and that he's in, that he's supposed to be an expert in things and they kind of just don't, they don't continue playing off that kind of character type. And instead he becomes kind of the de facto storyteller, kind of the one who the audience is supposed to view the story from. And then so at the halfway point, you kind of lose interest in Sakurai Sho's character because he doesn't really do anything other than lead a Madoka uh, from this place to that place he becomes a driver her driver at one point and he even exclaims at one scene like Monaco finds him and says I'm gonna need your power again and he says all right I'll help you out and then she hands him a set of car keys and then he says what <laughs> so you want me to be your driver what the hell and that's kind of what he, the what his character devolves into from the second act until the very end. And as cool as the scenes that depict Madoka using her, her math skills to predict outcomes are, I thought they could have used a, a few more scenes where that, that depict that power because they didn't really introduce that concept until about the second act. And I wish they, they just showed a lot more of it. One more thing that I wasn't really feeling was the sound editing. I mean, I like the music, but when it came to the sound, it, there was a, it was one of those movies where, you know, you're, you're watching scenes of just dialogue and, and talking and, and drama, and then suddenly it burst into like the scene that has loud, extremely loud noise, and that scene involves uh, flashbacks of when Madoka's mom was killed by a tornado, and you know, she, she whenever she remembers it, it's like this huge, uh, this huge gap in sound like first it's like not it's just peaceful and quiet and then it's just raging loud and it's like damn it's there was no there's no balance to it and lastly I thought that at times the story and the progression of the plot dragged it a few times it was quite slow but I think for the most part it was kind of consistent in that tempo. Uh, there were a few scenes that really picked up when there was a lot of action and it got really exciting, but then you kind of wanted it to continue, but then it just slowed down. I think for the most part, it kind of kept that tempo through the majority of the film, but it would have been nice to have a few more action sequences because they were pretty damn cool. But overall, what did I think of Laplace's Witch? Well, honestly, it was a pleasant surprise. As I said before, I don't expect much from Mike Takashi's films as of late. I mean, Terraformers, uh, Blade of the Immortal. I mean, they were either really bad or okay, but Laplace's Wish, I think I genuinely like. And I say I think because I'm still trying to process uh, the movie and what I've seen and if I really like it or if I'm just kind of uh, kind of going off of some post, uh, post-movie post hype. And, you know, just the more I think about it, the more I can kind of say, yeah, it was a pleasant surprise. I like it and I honestly think it's a movie that's worth checking out. It's a surprise in many ways. Like, I knew it was going to be a murder mystery, but I didn't think that it would dive into as much sci-fi elements as it did in the story, and I thought everything, the way everything played out, I enjoyed it. But yes, those are my thoughts on Laplace's Witch. If you guys seen it, what kind of thoughts did you guys have? Or what kind of questions did you guys have? Let me know in the comments section below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And by all means, please support Asian Films on Patreon. It really helps the channel a lot. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you all again in the next video. Take it easy.